it's now six o'clock. Uh, let's start with the. Uh, uh, let's see the agenda first. Uh, uh, Pet, may you flag the agenda? You're muted. Thank, thank you very much, uh, colleague. Uh, this is the agenda for tonight. Uh, can you lift it up? Right. Um, <clears throat> so uh, we have uh, opening and welcome, uh, adoption of the agenda, um, apologies. Uh, five briefing by the Department on Defense on the current security situation in the country and related matters. Uh, six uh, questions and uh, and co questions for clarity and comments by members of the committee, and responses by the department and seven way forward. Uh, and then eight we close the meeting. So these are the items on 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 the agenda, and. Uh, <coughs> Let us let, let let me just check if we are correct. Are we correct, uh, 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 Pat? Do we have the quorum? Yes, Chair, you do. You are eight. Yeah, eight. No, thank you so much. And uh, colleagues, thank you very much. Let me welcome you uh, to this meeting. Let me deal with the apologies first, um, uh, Pat. Um, we've just recorded the apology of the Secretary for Defense. And um, uh, you've just indicated that there's an, also an apology uh, from the, the Minister of Defense. Uh, yes. who, uh, who's attending a, a security uh, meeting um, at the same time as, 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 as that is at this, is held at the same time as this one. And um, are there any uh, further apologies uh, from the committee side before I check with um, Peter? Uh, no, <coughs> none. That's the, the, none. none. That's the only apology which I received, Chairperson. Uh, thank you very much. And um, Peter Gabinde, uh, besides the two apologies, uh, the SECDEF and the minister, are there any uh, other apologies? Good evening, Chair. We haven't received any so far, but I'm still trying to check who's going to be at this meeting. Maybe in the next five or ten minutes, I'll know because that's what we're trying to, to find out from for now. <clears throat> uh, Chairperson, I know that Maliaki Shalembe has got uh, connection problems, so um, I, I suspect that that is, that is why he's not on as oh, of yet. I see, I see. All right. Uh, I did see uh, his name earlier on. Uh, maybe the system uh, kicked him out. Um, all right. Must we uh, just delay uh, the meeting? Um, <clears throat> yeah, it's, it's Dennis, I've put my hand up, but if I can possibly come in and just say, you know, Considering the importance of this meeting, uh, with the apology of both the minister and the SEC Dev, I think it's extremely, you know, we, we need to have a high level representation from the Defence Force. We've got some big questions that need to be answered tonight. Um, and, uh, you know, with urgency. So I think that uh, we, we need to make sure we've got the right people and people that are mandated to, to, to make comments uh, and answer our questions. Uh, appropriately and correctly. So certainly, I think we need to know who's going to be representing the, the Defence Force, if not the Minister and the SEC Dev. You are muted. You are muted, you muted Chair. Sorry, thank you very much, colleagues. May we delay it for another uh, five minutes. Uh, let me, just before I say this, uh, Modisa, I see your hand. May I take your hand? May I Thank take you, Modisa? Yes. Uh, 
I just realized now on the news, they say the defense minister is briefing parliament, the joint standing committee on defense. So I wanted to check if the department can assist us. Probably the minister has indicated that they'll be joining the meeting to, to give us the, the briefing. So can we get an indication that what the media is currently reporting that the minister is, is, is giving us um, a briefing if it's going to be like that since we have received an apology from her. Thank you, Chair. Chairperson. Yes, thanks. And um, uh, uh, Mr. Motamai. Mr. Motamai, your hand is up. Can you hear me? Uh, yes, uh, slightly. Can you come closer to your mic, please? Okay, Chairperson. I would say it's very important for us to ask the minister some of the questions. But if the minister is not there, that is a serious problem. Can you make means so that we can ask minister's question? Because no one can answer the question that we're going to be answered by the minister. I All right. <clears throat> Thank you very much. Uh, Mr. Mare, I also see your hand uh, is yeah. up. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Yes, I, uh, I share the views of, of, of our colleagues. Uh, I think, uh, and I think you and I will agree that, that this meeting has been set up specifically with regards to the um, situation that is developed in, in, in the country. And we know that there was a lot of developments today and meetings today. Uh, and I certainly expected the minister to be here um, and, and, and high level defense force leadership. So my suggestion would be and request would be that we do not delay for five minutes, but we delay for at least a half an hour um, that the, you try to get hold of the minister and the defense leadership and that we reconvene. Um, doesn't matter if it's in an hour's time. Um, you know, we are we are here to serve. And whatever the time is, we must serve. And uh, if it's nine o'clock tonight, you know, let's meet nine o'clock tonight and kind of reconvene nine o'clock tonight or whatever the time might be. But that we know that we are, are going out of this meeting uh, because in terms of both the Defence Act and the, and the Constitution, we have got a certain uh, uh, obligations, um, legislative obligations as well, to make recommendations if so, if so decided. Um, so, so, and obviously, this is absolutely, I mean, we have never experienced what is going on at the moment in the country since our democracy. So, um, it is really, really, really bad. And uh, uh, it is very, very important that we must take a, a fully informed um, uh, the decisions and resolutions at this meeting. That, that, that was the whole purpose. So, um, uh, that, that would be my suggestion in support of our, of our colleagues. Thank you. No, thank you very much. Um, uh, Sis Pat, may, may, may I know? Yes, such as before. <clears throat> Who is that? Ngabinde. Oh, Ngabinde, yes, Mr. Ngabinde. Yes, Chair, I've just received an indication that CJ Ops will be joining the meeting. I'm just trying to establish if they have the connection in their office, then I'll come back to you and let you know. But CJ no, Ops is, is joining the meeting, yes. No, it's fine. I think uh, oh, CJ... Well, Minister Sekdev and the chief are part of the NSC, so all three of them won. Can you say, NS, NS, can you say that in full? Uh, this um, National I, Security Council. National Security Council. And uh, yes. just inform the people who sit on the National Security Council so that they, they know even the importance yes, of the Yes, I'm meeting. saying Minister Sekdev and the chief of the SNDF will be at that meeting, so all three of them won't be at the Joint, joint Standing Committee meeting tonight. But CJ Ops will be joining the, the meeting. We must postpone. We must delay. There's no doubt. <clears throat> Let, let's delay. But let's, let's check if we cannot get the, the information from uh, the CJ Ops. I, I think <clears throat> he's the one now who's responsible for, for, for the... the um, for, for the coordination of the forces, um, you see. But if at the end we, we still think um, we, we need uh, the minister to come on board, 
we will delay it. I, I just don't want us to delay the meeting even when the information is already before us. It's when the information, it's when we think the information, we still need more information that we can then either uh, adjourn the meeting until uh, later on that um, we, we can do it. Um, <clears throat> so uh, as soon as we get him on board, uh, as soon as we get the CJ Ops on the platform, we will continue. Uh, at the end, we'll then make a call as to uh, what do we do. Do we adjourn until later this evening, or we call another meeting um, and we convene on another day? Chairperson. Yes, sir. Yes, Mr. Chabele. Is the DM not uh, going to be able to be in this meeting? Is he part of the of that uh, meeting of the minister and the chief of the defense? Uh, 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 can you uh, assist with that, uh, Mr. Kabinde? You see, colleagues, uh, I can tell you, uh, the country is, is, is busy, especially the security cluster is busy. And um, it was busy this morning and uh, this, this afternoon and may also be busy right till uh, very late uh, tonight. Uh, I just want to assure you about that. So <clears throat> it's understandable now when we don't get, get everyone at the same time uh, because of the situation. Um, we are all in different uh, meetings and uh, talking about the same, uh, you know, uh, 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 subject, discussing the same med. And uh, but the, in the end, uh, we will contribute. We are, in, in fact, we are all contributing into the same uh, objective. So let, 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 we'll start as soon as um, uh, the uh, uh, chief joins, um, CJ Ops uh, uh, comes on board. Um, Chair? Yes, sir. Uh, Mr. Chamberlain? Yes. Um, I was just saying, <clears throat> seeing that there are all these uh, processes taking place, and all of them are geared towards uh, the same goal, the same goal that I think we want to achieve. And uh, from our worries in the first engagement yesterday or the day before yesterday, and even uh, developments into now, it's like uh, progress is being made here and there. In 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 you know in some places, it's not like yesterday. Uh, I just want to check or know um, what is this that we urgently need uh, that requires that uh, the minister. I know that uh, you know if a, we have a constitutional mandate to keep the executive under check, and uh, we have got a constitutional mandate also as this committee that is even much broader. Uh, Big and deeper than than just that. It goes into specific areas that we deal with from time to time as this joint standing committee. I'm just saying, what are those issues that we we need answers to as soon as yesterday, so that when we engage with the minister, she already knows the kind of issues that we want to know, rather than just let this time go. Um, yeah, my neck tells me that. It is the situation on the ground is developing very fast and it's unabating. Exactly. Uh, yes, I'm told that the DM is on the is, uh, has joined the meeting. Uh, DM, good afternoon. Oh. Chair, good evening. Good, good evening, oh. Chair, and good evening to... Sorry. Uh, honorable members of the Joint Standing Committee on Defense, good evening. Thank you very much, DM, and welcome. Uh, Kabinde, how are we doing in terms of um, uh, 
your um, connection that side? Yes, we've just sent the link through to CJ Ops. I'm trying to check with his office if they've managed to connect. Uh, I'm I with them on the phone. Brigadier uh, Tulare on, on, on the line. Are they not together there? I'm not sure, Chair. I'm not in Pretoria. I'm in Johannesburg. I'm just conducting the one on the uh, phone. Uh, good evening, Chair. Gerard Tulare, how, how are you, sir? Sorry, sorry. Uh, Brigadier General, how are you? I'm good yourself. I'm good, I don't remember. Uh, no, 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 I'm not with the uh, uh, chief joint operation. I'm uh, separately at home as well. Uh, okay. No, 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 it's fine. Thanks. I, I just wanted nice. to just... Okay, thanks, uh, General. Let, let me try and call him uh, on the side uh, just to check what the problem is. You know, numbers of <clears throat> numbers that are getting affected, uh, they're increasing. Um, you, you think that because we are in, in day three or day four, things are starting to, um, you know, getting, um, you know, we're starting to get, uh, get uh, quieter. No, it's not. Um, I'm receiving messages after messages. Yeah, no, it's bad. No, it's, it's terrible. It's terrible. And I thought things are I thought things are stabilizing. So. No, it's 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 not. In actual fact, it, it's 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 getting worse because now. Um, we started, um, you know, uh, 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 taking um, uh, warehouses, and obviously. <clears throat> That's where most, uh, you know, uh, retailers uh, uh, store their uh, stock. You empty the you empty the store, you, and you empty the warehouse. Then there is nothing left um, <clears throat> for for anyone. I mean, even now, um, there is no fuel. I had to drive kilometers looking for for diesel uh, during the day. My wife uh, left home at eight o'clock um, uh, and stayed in the in the queue until four o'clock. Just when she was about to reach the door, uh, the store uh, closed. Um, General, uh, welcome, and over to you. Sorry, General. Uh, sorry, not over to you. Uh, General. Uh, welcome. How are you? Uh, good evening, uh, Chair. Um, apologies, and to all the members. Uh, uh, of the committee, 
Uh, I've been running around. I came in running now. And uh, this is why I'm struggling even to identify where I can raise my hand. Uh, but now I, I am here and uh, initially it was giving me problems. Now I, I, I hope I, I, I am clear. I, I tried all by means to make it to the uh, meeting and um, our principals are unavailable. And I had also to be withdrawn from, from, I was expected to be with them. Um, but yes, uh, to, uh, to withdraw in Russia. Uh, okay. Thank you, Chair. No, 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 it's understandable. It's hectic um, uh, in general. Uh, we welcome you nevertheless. Thank you very much, uh, colleagues. Um, I'm sure it's safe now to start the, the meeting. And uh, <clears throat> colleagues, um, I just want to start by saying that um, the current uh, spate of looting and criminality in the KwaZulu-Natal and Gauteng provinces has brought about an unprecedented state of insecurity. Uh, it is evident that the South African police services were overstressed in most areas and unable to respond proportionally to, secure, to security threats. The committee must therefore <clears throat> welcome the deployment of uh, 2000 uh, South African National Defense Force uh, personnel as it assisted the SAPS to gain control over some areas affected by insecurity. The effectiveness of SNDF deployments uh, witnessed thus far and the discipline with which uh, SNDF personnel have conducted themselves up to this point is acknowledged and commended. However, despite these uh, deployments, uh, insecurity remains, sorry, despite these uh, deployments, insecurity remains in many parts of uh, KwaZulu Natal and Gauteng. The threat of continued looting and violence remains and poses a significant short-term risk with a long-term effect on the economy and jobs. The short-term risk to security is exacerbated by, amongst other things, the following factors. One, in many areas, uh, stability uh, exists uh, purely due to the efforts of uh, dedicated community initiatives where SAPS and uh, SNTF assistance is not uh, in place yet. The ability of such uh, community initiatives to maintain security over the coming days could come under pressure as they are not trained, staffed, and equipped to do so. Two, the Minister of Police, uh, Mr. Peggy Gale, and they stated that looting may be a smoke screen and that other attacks on the state were planned and that targets supposedly included uh, hospitals and the provincial legislature. Such intelligence uh, suggests that a threat to critical infrastructure remains. Three, as would be expected, SNDF deployments include the protection of national key, uh, national key points. While this function is critical, it would imply a smaller contingent of the 2,000 um, SNDF members available for assistance uh, to the SAPS. Based on these short-term security concerns and the fact that violence and looting uh, remain in certain parts of the country, it warrants the consideration of additional SNDF deployments. It is evident that troop availability is of the utmost uh, importance. The current levels of 2,000 or 5,000 even uh, soldiers deployed uh, may therefore not be sufficient to address short-term security needs. The SNDF requires higher levels of troop availability uh, to be able to react uh, appropriately to security requirements. 
Let, limiting the numbers, sorry, the number to 2,500 um, soldiers or even 5,000 uh, for deployment may undermine the SNDF's capability to facilitate a surge in forces as needed. The Joint Standing Committee on Defense condemns in the, strongest, in the strongest terms the ongoing violence, uh, looting and criminality affecting parts of South Africa. While the deployment of the SNDF in a domestic policing function raising, raises justifiable concern, the unprecedented levels of insecurity requires an extraordinary state response. As such, within the mandate of the, of the Joint Standing Committee on Defense, the, this committee should consider recommending the immediate amendment of the current deployment levels uh, to allow for a significant increase in troop availability. The increase in availability of forces should be such that it will allow the SNDF to effectively support SAPS operations, allow for increased response to cases of looting and violence, and to secure national key points where necessary. Availability of forces should also allow for a reactionary capability outside uh, Gauteng and Guazul Natal should the SAPS identify such a need in other provinces. The committee must therefore urge the immediate implementation of this recommendation as a critical as a critical step to prevent the need for a state of emergency in the short term, as some advantages thereof, such as the imposing of a curfew, have already been attained through the current state of disaster that is uh, in place uh, throughout. The Joint Standing Committee on Defense will continue to provide uh, ongoing oversight of the SNTF uh, deployment um, under uh, Operation uh, Prosper. Colleagues, I thought I should just uh, uh, raise, say, those few remarks um, in, in uh, opening, as part of opening uh, this meeting. And uh, now I will grant the opportunity to to call upon, the, just before I call upon the, the Chief Jones, and uh, uh, the DM may want to, to uh, say a few words. I'm not too sure if the minister is in the meeting. I can see. Yes, yes the minister, I've seen the minister's video was on and her hand is up. So it seems like the minister is in the meeting. Minister. Thank you very much. Oh, thank, thank you very much. And, and Thank welcome. you very much, Chapter Sinan. Sorry, I'm in a dark hole. Yes, your apology has been granted, Minister. I was actually not expecting you to join us because you have been double booked. Uh, it's hectic. Uh, meetings are, are happening uh, at the same time due to the situation in our country. Let me invite you, Minister, to say a few words and, and, and before we get a, a detailed presentation on, on the item. Over to you, Minister. Thank you very much, Chapter Chairperson, honorable members, thank you. Please bear from, with me for, for addressing you from a, I'm, I'm in a car and, and I'm really sorry about it. I'm rushing to my next meeting, which starts at seven. The meeting has been moved from six to seven. Thank you, Chair, and thank you for inviting us to this meeting. Chair, the presentation will be made by General Sangweni, who is uh, the newly appointed head of Joint Ops. But just to say, Chair, that this morning we had a, a golden opportunity of being invited to a meeting by the Commander-in-Chief, where he was interacting with leaders of all political parties. And I to discuss the state of uh, the developments in the country. I should say, Chair, it was a very, very useful 
meeting. Very used, uh, there were quite a number of issues which were raised by leaders of political parties, not only, and, and they were not, uh, it was the meeting's uh, attitude was about, we are South Africans, let's all find a solution to the challenges which are facing us as a country. So you would, you would say that was the theme because as we were discussing all of the proposals which were made by the leaders of the political parties from parliament were proposals which are meant to take the process forward and resolve the issues in the country. First and foremost, uh, which I need to say this uh, chairperson, I'm sure you observed that the deployment happened the talk of the deployment happened even though there were no papers submitted to parliament. It was because of the agency of the situation, Chair, you recall that was about two days ago. And immediately we had to make sure in, in our small way that we had a, a few soldiers on the road whilst we are working out all of these other matters. Initially, Chair, the letter which was brought to me for my signature on its way to the president was a proposal of deploying 2,500 soldiers between KZN and Houding. And having received that, when I engaged with the president last night, president said at a meeting of the National Security Council, which I am attending now at seven, that he is unhappy with those numbers, that we should not worry about the cost, but we should be worried about the rampant loot, looting, but also about the lives of South Africans who are getting, who are, who are being killed. So the president then made a proposal that let us rather escalate the number to 10,000 Chairperson and honorable members. And that was last night. And as we were now preparing documents this morning for the president's signature for 10,000, then the opposition parties, actually I can say chair unanimously made a proposal that the president should reduce the numbers to a strength of plus minus 75,000, including members of the reserve force something, the kind of mobilization, which is the, uh, the pandemic, beginning of that pandemic. So as things stand now, Chairperson, we are submitting, we discussed with the president after that meeting, and we agreed that, okay, we don't have to say 75,000, but we should not also not keep at the 10,000, which the president had proposed, that we should rather find a middle way because you also don't want to mobilize for the sake of mobilizing because our mobilization must also be informed by the continuous assessment of the situation Chairperson, on the ground. So we've now submitted, now, now, we've now, we've now submitted a request for deployment of plus minus 25,000 members. So in other words, we're trying to find a middle way between the 75 and the 10,000, which was uh, proposed by the president. So we, we, we will start uh, chairperson with the, the 25. Chair, just to say in parting that in a situation I know is very bad in KZN, and has been bad for the past two days. But Chairperson, right now, we have no less than 1,000 members in KZN. However, in Deben, we have about 800 members. Chairperson, when the deployment started, the deployment focused on deployment to national key points. It was like guard duties in areas, for instance, if you look at Port Shepstein, in areas where you have your oil refineries, at the airports, et cetera, et cetera. That's what we thought we needed to do 
which was a discussion which was held between the police and the, the army chairperson. However, you'll recall that very day, people started attacking the malls, something which we had not anticipated. Our soldiers were not at the malls chair, and I'm not defending them, but the agreement between ourselves and the police was that we will do guard duty in order to release the police to go and enforce the law and engage with people who are carrying out acts of criminality. That's the only reason why we were not at the malls. So as it is now, both here in Johannesburg and in KZN, even though chair up until last night and this morning, you still had areas which were on fire in KZN. But one, I can safely say there is deployment chair. And first thing tomorrow morning, I'm also leaving for the KZ, for KZN so that we are on the ground. There are also vehicles chair which are rolling out, which have been rolled out, which are on the way to, uh, to KZN chairperson. Uh, because we believe that visibility should not just be visibility of warm bodies, it should be visibility of vehicles, it should be vis visibility of helicopters, so helicopter patrols. So that's what we are trying to do, Chairperson, and, and, and I hope we'll try our best, and we, we're praying that there shouldn't be any more loss of life, Chairperson. I thank you. I thank you, honorable members. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Minister, for, uh, for your update. And um, I think we must welcome the developments. And um, since uh, your last uh, deployment, and I'm not too sure if um, uh, General, uh, 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 the Chief joins, um, is ready for, you know, have worked out the details um, in so far as the latest information is concerned. And uh, I was thinking in my mind that instead of um, allowing him to present today, that we find another day in the next two, three days when they've worked out the plan and uh, so that the presentation uh, incorporates uh, the latest uh, development. And uh, if, 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 the, if the colleagues agree with me, I'll allow them to say a few words and, uh, and then close the meeting uh, on the note that we'll meet again in the two, three days when um, you know, the plan has been finalized. So that we take um, you know, a, a, what you call a, a comprehensive uh, presentation um, on, on, the, on the issue at hand. But let me hear what the, the colleagues will have to say. In, in that way, Minister, we can then release all of you at seven to then come again, to, to, to come back again in the, in the next two or three days uh, when you, you have, we have got it out everything else. Uh, colleagues, let me hear what you have to say. May I take leave, Chair? Yes, Minister, you may take leave. But let me just hear, colleagues, anything you want to say before the Minister takes leave? Uh, Mr. Mare? Yes, thank you, Chair. Uh, thank you to the Minister. Minister, thank you very, very, very much for what you have conveyed to us. I think we are all 100% behind you. Uh, in fact, we are very encouraged that you have uh, convinced them that we go up to 25,000. I think that is absolutely adequate. I'm also very, very glad that the president has said, don't worry about the cost. That means that we are all in this together. Um, and as the, I think the, you have, you've probably picked up what the chairperson was to say, um, because I think he has encompassed and, and reflected on, on all our um, uh, sentiments, although we have not met before today uh, in, in a formal setting. Uh, but I think that's a reflection of our sentiments. And, and Minister, we know that this is, this is, in my opinion, a threat to our democracy. It's a threat to our integrity of our land. And this is the role of the SNDF. So far, where the SNDF has been, have been deployed, it seems like there was always a very positive result. Whether it's in Port Shepston, whether it was in Belito, whether it was in, in Pinetown. And, and that is a 
enormous show of strength and solidarity with the with the plight of the people, uh, especially in KZN uh, and to and to a large extent in, in in Gauteng, and I think that is what South Africans want. And we I've never experienced in my life the kind of support for the SENDF uh, that I have seen and heard over the last couple of days. I'm inundated, and I know that I. I, I, I'm always sending information through to you and the chairperson, um, but I think this is the sentiments of South Africa, and and I have never ever experienced such a solidarity uh, since 20, since 94, 95, um, and I think this is an enormous opportunity for for us and the SENDF to show the country what kind of SENDF we can be, what they require, and also to the president and the national treasury in terms of what you should fund because then we can then then we can secure the lives of south africans and and our assets so minister we are all behind you and chairperson i support your suggestion that um you know what you have said and what you've read out i fully concur with and i support and that uh, you know that we convene in a day or two because i think then then everybody is in a much better position to give us really really up-to-date information uh, so thank you very much for the opportunity, and Minister. I, 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 uh, God bless to you, and uh, and really, um, my apologies for 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 bothering you so so often and so much. But I know it's all in 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 a good spirit and uh, and in the best interest of South Africa. Thank you, Chairperson. Thank you, Minister. Thank you so much, Mr. Mare and Mr. Mafanya, uh, for the next uh, few minutes before the Minister takes leave. Thank you very much, Chair. Thank you to the Minister and the DM. Uh, we were looking forward to an in-depth discussions, and uh, we really fully understand um, the commitments that the minister has got. And then through you, Chair, I would like you to suspend this meeting until further notice, because now if we elaborate and we give each other an opportunity to elaborate on these matters, it means we'll be having a proper meeting. So because we cannot have it today, tonight, then I, I suggest that you, 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 through your indulgence, that we postpone this meeting. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, any other person um, from the ANC side? Uh, but before, yes. My hand is us. Oh, you had your hand up, uh, Mr. Ryder. Um, thank you very much. Two minutes remaining. Thanks. Uh, I'll be very brief. Minister, thank you very much. And thanks for making the effort to join our meeting and, and, and acknowledging the importance of the meeting through your attendance. I want to appreciate that because um, I made a noise because you weren't here earlier. So I appreciate you making the special effort from the card to join us. Um, Minister, and I also want to agree with Mr. Maria and say that the presence of the Defence Force has been well received uh, wherever the guys have gone in, the guys and girls have gone in. So it's much appreciated and if you can pass on to the structures the fact that their efforts are appreciated, it would be most welcome. I think that the biggest outcry, though, has been that, uh, you know, it, 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 may have, it may have been too late. And, of course, the increase in numbers is also a little bit too late. Um, and and it, it's been fairly obviously needed on the ground. We were all aware that there was going to be nonsense uh, from the weekend because, you know, the, the information was out there circulating on, on, on social media. So I think that the Defence Force has done very well, but they haven't received very good intelligence in terms of, of the numbers of people that have been needed and the reaction that's been needed. And I'd, I'd just like to hear your comment uh, um, about the quality of the information that's being received, because you know the last thing that we need is to have a bunch of soldiers running from one side to the other as things happen. Because what we've heard is that as soon as the defence force arrives in an area, you know everything dies down. But you know by that stage it may even be too late. Uh, and then as soon as they leave that area, again there's a flare-up. So what is the quality of the intelligence information that, that, the, the, that the Defence Force is receiving? Minister, if you can tell us a little bit about that. Um, and yes, thank you, Chair. I also agree that, that we postpone. There will obviously be an amended letter that we would need to approve uh, or agree to and acknowledge. So yeah, I think uh, a, a later meeting or a different meeting is, is, is in order. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ali um, uh, And then Ale, Alec is, and Mr. Chabeling is the last person before the minister closes, uh, uh, gives us his uh, closing remarks. Uh, Lechwase, Honorable Lechwase. 
Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Chair. Let me support the proposal. Let me start by supporting the proposal that is going be for us to reconvene in two or three days, get the proper report, and we will engage them. But also, let me just say to the minister that we, we, you have our support. We have all the defense force and all our frontliners in our prayers. This cannot be. It is high time that we must be in charge. And as much as there were times when people wanted to lose hope on our defense, so this is the time for us to come in and save the country. Because what is happening is there's just a lot of unlawfulness. And that cannot be allowed. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Ms. Lachwase. Uh, Mr. Nchabeling, I will also want to afford the DM a few minutes before the minister comes back. Uh, please bear the DM. Uh, Mr. Nchabeling? Yes, sir. Thanks, Chairperson. I, I have to switch my video off. Um, I'm actually, I mean, I'm in the car, in between the uh, receptions. Chairperson, let me take this opportunity to welcome the presentation by the minister and your summary of all our sentiments that covered all our sentiments as members. Uh, you really know us very well. Um, but, but again, to say that um, I'd like to second what the Honorable Mapanya suggested, that we, we close this before we spoil it. Um, but at the same time, say to the minister, Tolka, we are behind you. Um, and to our men and women in camouflage, you really make us proud. Keep it up. Thank, Thank you. you. Very good. Very good. And uh, DM, your last person before the minister comes in, uh, comes back. No, chat person, no comment on from my side. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, uh, DM. And uh, Minister, we have agreed that we'll um, uh, reconvene in the next two or three days. I'm sure by then um, the plan will be ready. And um, over to you, Minister. Did that's you very much. The new developments. Over to you, Minister. Chairperson, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you to all the members uh, of Parliament for the support. Uh, let me start by saying, Chair, we really appreciate, you know, Honorable Ryder says, did, the information which we received, did it fail us or not? I would like to say, you are talking, Chair. Yes, can you shift your, so that we can see your head? Uh, you, I oh. you can yeah. I'm so I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Thank you. I'm sorry, Chair. Now, pleasure. the Honorable Rider asked whether, in fact, we did have intelligence. Uh, there was intelligence, I think. But I think the intelligence came in too late in that chair and honorable members. When it started, right? When it started, you read from social media networks about what the next thing which was going to happen. When the mall started burning, the next thing we saw in social media, if you remember, those of you who, who are in, in the social media, you'll see that then they said in Gauteng, we will close the following roads. And then they went on and on uh, in Pumalanga, access to this and and they had a, a whole list of roads which would be closed it leading to Gauteng. now if you look at that information later on you'll realize that uh, 90 percent or 80 percent of that information which was contained on that list was in fact accurate where we did not get the information was the fact that people were going to go into the malls and loot and, and do all of the things which happened at the malls. We did not have that information, at least on our side. And from what I am getting, even the police did not have that information. It is after the looting had begun that we got this information on social medias about roads which were going to be closed. 
I, I should say this. Now, unfortunately for us, our responsibility when we are deployed internally is that of coming in in support of the police. So what you do is you move into areas which have been identified by the police. So we agreed amongst ourselves in a proper meeting, actually, that it would be best if for the start, the Defense Force would do guard duties at key installations, national, national key points of government. And thereafter, we see and we release the police to do the work they are supposed to do of enforcement. Now, with that having happened, the next thing, we then saw this trend of really attacks on, on, the, on, the, on the malls. And, and so people, I know that people were then calling for the defense force and asking where is the defense force? But actually the defense force was there, but the defense force was located in areas where perhaps uh, we, I don't, I don't want to say we shouldn't have, but to us, the key was if there's going to be trouble in the country, start by pro protecting and securing your national key points. It never occurred to us that we should move into areas such as malls, particularly, Chair, because malls, anyway, there's always a contract between business itself and private security companies. So if you go to the malls, at every mall, you'll find the private security companies. However, now what we have learned from here is that it's important for the police to keep regular contact with uh, the private security companies who are deployed at the malls, because obviously they are the ones who get information about the first action which happens there so that they then link up with the police. So even though you do have your structures, your NICOG, your JOG, your national joints, uh, but we missed this one of interaction. It's only now that police since yesterday have been interacting with the security companies who are at, at the malls, Chairperson. And yeah, I think we've, I can only say this was an eye opener for all of us who are in the security cluster. This was a, a learning curve and, uh, and we were nearly caught with our, I don't want to say pants down, but, but, mm. but that's a reality. I think that's, that's what happened. But, figurally speaking, figurally speaking. <laughs> so, so now, following that, I think what one thing which is coming out from everybody is we are vowing that this should never happen and that it should not continue. We must stop what is happening because our view is that it is clearly an undermining of a democratic state. What we see here are seeds of counter-revolution, undermining of the state, and the state must assert its authority. Thank you very much, honorable members. Thank you very much. Felix, this is an unprecedented situation and um, we must stand together. There must be no apportioning of blame. We must then say, now we, this is a situation we are faced with, what do we do? And then put our um, heads together. With, that, with, with those uh, chair, we've agreed that we'll meet again uh, in the next uh, few days. I will indicate when exactly and the time for the meeting. Minister, thank you very much for taking your time out uh, to be at, at this meeting. Thank you very much, uh, General uh, Chief uh, Jones. Um, I know you were ready, but there is now new information and we want them to be given an update in the next two, three days. With those words, colleagues, thank you very much for your time at the meeting. Thank you. thank you very much, Chair. Thank you very much, Chair. Good thank luck. You, Good luck for tonight thank and you. stay safe, please. Thank stay you. safe. Thank you. 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 Thank